Today, I want to speak about the story of Leonardo Vitale, his journey, unfortunate end, but more importantly, his words about the mafia. Leonardo Vitale was born in Sicily, and to no surprise, into a mafia family. His father, Francesco, was a member, but died when Leonardo was young. Giovanni Battista Vitale was the boss of their town, and he became a father figure to Leonardo. One of the things he taught his nephew was the act of killing, and did so by taking him to a field one day and commanding him to shoot an old horse, which he did. Not long after, and this was in 1960, he killed his first victim, again on the order of his uncle. I believe in total he killed three people. As a reward for that murder, he became an inducted member that same year, and at the time he was either 18 or 19 years old. He would eventually become a capo regime in his uncle's borgata. In August 1972, Batali was arrested for kidnapping, and after a week in isolation, he began to show signs of depression, as well as self-harm. He was released after the case against him fell apart due to lack of evidence. But following his release, Vitali began to struggle with the crimes he committed, especially the murders. And on March 29, 1973, he walked into the police station in Palermo and requested to speak with Bruno Contrada, the chief of police. Vitali confessed to numerous crimes, which included extortion, arson, and murders. He also broke down the mafia structure and the existence of its commission. Ironically, years later, Contrada would be arrested and sentenced to 10 years for mafia association. Subsequent to his confession, a team of forensic psychiatrists evaluated Vitali to determine if he was fit to give evidence. They pronounced him semi-mentally ill, but stated that his mental state did not impair his memory or the validity of his confessions. Nevertheless, numerous mafia members were consequently indicted, but were all acquitted on the grounds of insufficient evidence. Vitali, on the other hand, was committed to a criminal asylum in Messina. He was released from custody in June of 1984 and went back to live in Palermo. On December 2, 1984, after returning from Mass, Vitali was sitting in his car outside his house and was hit by two shotgun blasts. He died five days later in a hospital. Most of the information Vitali provided was disregarded because he was considered mentally ill. However, years later, Giovanni Falcone and Paolo Borsellino both stated that even in death, Vitali deserved credit because had his information been adequately verified, it could have led to the neutralization of the Coyonesi and saved the lives of more than a thousand people. Vitali would state the following, I killed to demonstrate to my uncle that I was somebody. I found in my uncle the father I never had. I admired him. I tried to imitate him. I'll end with something important that Vitali also said, and everyone who has an interest in the mafia should definitely hear. Mafia is criminality, and mafiosi should not be respected nor revered. The mafia lives far from God and from divine laws. Those who respect and protect them, or even worse, exploit them, have forgotten God. One becomes a man of honor by observing the Ten Commandments of God.